I'm here in the cabinet room with uh, John Cousins, who's been a great contributor to PEI folklore and uh, island history, yeah, and has recently published uh, an important book uh, on a, the Quaker settlement that was established at New London in the 1770s and uh, kept going for roughly 20 years, John. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, John, maybe we'll start on a, a well, first, congratulations on this. I loved reading this, and I can tell that it's been a, a labor of love, and uh, likely more labor than people would ever realize. But you have a direct personal connection to this, uh, in a yes. Yes. familial lineage. Yes. Uh, uh, both my uh, uh, parents or my uh, ancestors on two sides, uh, on the cousin's side. Uh, John Cousins came there in 1780 and married a girl who had been there for five years at that point, a Quaker girl, uh, uh, Mary Townsend. So uh, there were, I, I was, I, it began as an exploration of just where these people came from and what they were, were, were like. And it ended up, I began finding, uh, which had not really been explored before, the, 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 um, the fact that this community had been established really as a Quaker colony and uh, uh, by a rather wealthy Londoner, Robert Clark. And so uh, he had great plans and uh, I think it was Boyd Beck who said a perfect storm erupted, you know, uh, both politically and internationally uh, in terms of the American Revolution. His, 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 his idea of trading with the Caribbean was a good one, but then you couldn't, once the Re American Revolution broke out, you couldn't get a dory down the coast. And John, this settlement was different from any other uh, settlement in Prince Edward Island in the sense that it was uh, built around a town site oh, yes, and yes, then yes, had yes. a more of a manufacturing and fishing Absolutely. as its kind of yes. industry. Right? Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the other communities, the Scots community at, 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 at Stanhope, the uh, Scots community at, at Malpec, scattered farmsteads, scattered farmsteads. Uh, um, um, Thomas Curtis, who came to Malpec in the uh, fall of 1775, they had to walk and walk. The, the, ha the, the farmsteads knew the shore where these people, shipwrecked people, were having to sh take shelter, they were all filled and he had to walk for a mile or more inland to come to a house where that could take them. So yeah, scattered farmsteads. And frankly, if you were going to live and survive on PEI, you had to live at that point off the sea and off the land and uh, a condensed, what they call a nucleated settlement, just was going to be hard. And one of the remarkable pieces of uh, this development or this settlement was uh, the mill um, and how, yes. how that uh, yes. had to be yes. part of the overall picture. Yes, because the, the mill was seven miles inland and that is weird considering the incredible hardships these people had. There wasn't a tree cut when they landed there in 1774. So you can imagine having to build houses and then in order to operate a mill to get through seven miles of wilderness across uh, New London Bay, basically, and up, uh, mostly they traveled, if they could, by water up the Stanley River up to what is now Founds Creek, which is an absolute marvelous place to build a mill because it's a narrow valley high on the sides, so the, the dam itself wasn't, uh, you know, uh, didn't have to be too long, but uh, yes. It had to be above high water mark, and you had to go that far inland. And uh, he was going to produce sawn lumber for the Caribbean trade. Uh, there was a big trade, sawn lumber there, and probably for export to England uh, in the very early days. And, uh, and even for local uh, purposes, because uh, um, they, uh, the people at New London, were supplying uh, Charlottetown with things at that point. Yeah. And um, speaking of the lumber and the mill, <clears throat> you get into the point about how many of the people who were part of that settlement um, stayed on uh, 
uh, and 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 uh, really were prolific and have been in PEI. Yes. Uriah yes. Coffin. Uriah Coffin. Benjamin Quaker, Chapel. Yes. Benjamin Chapel. Uh, Uriah Coffin is very interesting because it shows the extent of the, the the Quaker network. Because he wasn't a Quaker from England, he linked up through the network with uh, the English Quakers, Robert Clark, who headed the thing, and he came from the Nantucket, which was the capital of the Quakers in, in those days, came up to run the mill and uh, lasted, and it was, it was a tough go uh, in the wilderness. Uh, yes, uh, this, there were other New Londoners uh, who eventually ended up, uh, Benjamin Chapel uh, needs a sympathetic and uh, extensive biography, a marvelous, marvelous, wonderful man, who's a Methodist, actually, rather than a Quaker. The Quakers revered him. The Quakers uh, loved Benjamin Chapel uh, because he was such a good man. And of course, he had a long history here in this town. Uh, after he, after he left New London, he was in demand by the officials here. But there were other families, Smiths, who ended up Woods, Smiths and Woodses and Adams. and uh, Adams. Uh, Adams has remained in that area. Cousins has remained in that area. Uh, so there were Smiths who moved into town, and they may have ended up in uh, Lot Forty Nine, which was owned by Robert Clark. Uh, Woods is the same. Now you uh, so mentioned uh, Mary. Townsend, your ancestor, yes, yeah. and uh, would it be her sister Elizabeth? Her sister the... Elizabeth or Eliza, who married James Campbell, who is the the direct ancestor of of the the Cam um, uh, Alex Campbell, Payne Campbell family. Who would have sat uh, at this table? <laughs> who was uh, sat at this table? Uh, yes. So the some of the premiers have Quaker ancestors. Indeed, they do. And then, let, let, because we, we, uh, we want to, of course, encourage people to know about this book and to read it. And, and, and this is, this is a, a series that's about entrepreneurs, and you're an entrepreneur of island history and folk <laughs> tales and, and, and folk song. Um, and uh, the, when, may give us a sense of uh, the amount of time that was involved in oh, getting oh, this yes. done. Oh, I, I think uh, probably about eight years. Uh, I, it took me to c complete it at least seven. I was working at it before 2010, I know that. And my wife, every morning when, when I would <laughs> get her breakfast, uh, we, she had to listen to what Walter Patterson was up to the night before, so she stood by me through, through throughout, and uh, it was wonderful. I don't know how I could have done it. And talk um, about the different places that you went to uh, find uh, yes. this information. Well, look, I was in, in contact with archives, uh, Quaker archives in the U.S. I spent some time in in Winchester, in in Hampshire, uh, where they were wonderful. The archivists there. Uh, and in Kew in London, uh, which is the National Archives. And I have to say this too, that it's, it's for somebody my age, and I'm older than everyone that I know, but for somebody my age, the ability to sit in your farmhouse in Bloomfield and access an archive, a, a Quaker archive in London in the middle of a snowstorm is, is, is pretty remarkable when you grew up in a house with no electricity, you know. Well, this has been a, a terrific contribution uh, to <laughs> well, what people know uh, about uh, where people came from, uh, who are who the ancestors of some important uh, Prince Edward Island uh, families are, uh, some of our families today, um, and in particular of the hardships and how they lived and uh, how they how they made a go of it. Yes, how they made a go of it, and uh, it was hard. It was hard for for every every uh, pioneer who came here. We don't we don't want to lose touch with just how hard it was for our people. Not two hundred yes, two hundred and fifty years ago, three hundred years ago, but also. Seventy-five years ago. Indeed, and maybe I'll, maybe we'll kind of 
bring it through because there are so yes, many particular yes, yes. pieces to this. But the work that you did on the wreck of uh, the Elizabeth oh, yes, um, yes. was a marvelous tale, yes. including um, how people survived those first weeks yes, and months yes, uh, yes. on the North Shore. Yes. Uh, Thomas Curtis, a young man, young strong man, said, uh, he said the children seem to stand it better uh, than some of the adults. Uh, the, poor, uh, the poor women who are walking, uh, carrying their babies, and uh, the men carrying the children also through the snow from Malpec, through the woods, through Malpec, New London. Uh, that, that was, uh, that was a, a tough old go, and they were so exhausted, having spent nine days on a, on a sandbank off Lot 11, that uh, you wonder how they survived, why they didn't, why those, some of those children didn't die. And is it fair to say they likely wouldn't have without the hospitality and assistance of the Mi'kmaq? Uh, the, the, interestingly enough, there was a Mi'kmaq uh, 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 sailor on that ship coming from England, so my guess is that he had been recruited in the Malpec area maybe the previous year or, and maybe there were more of them, and I would love to know who that Mi'kmaq uh, sailor was, because he went with them when they finally, uh, when they finally uh, got in the the rescue boats, the first rescue boat, that, or the first boat that went for help. He went so that if they met any of his his uh, people, that the, he would be able to talk to them and get and get help. It is, it's startling to think that there, he was he was a sailor on board that vessel coming from London. Yeah. And you uncovered all of that, and yeah. you tell it well. So anyone who's looking for a real good read <laughs> and a good piece of writing um, and a good piece of research, um, I highly recommend that they well, get their hands on this. Thank you, thank you very much, Premier. It's uh, it's been it's, it's been very interesting and. Uh, uh, I hope it's a little uh, a little contribution to what the situation was like. I think a lot, lot more than a little. That's great. Thank you. Good man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.